Hello everyone. In this lecture, we will learn how to use Newton's laws of motions in various systems. My objective of this short lesson is to be able to help you understand how to apply Newton's three laws of motion. Now, before we even start, um, I would like to review, give you the basic idea um, of what these laws really are. Law 1, which is called the law of inertia, basically says that if no net external force acts on an object, then the velocity of the object remains constant. In other words, the velocity of an object remains constant if no external force, if no net external force acts on that system. This means that A is also equal to zero. Law 2, which is known as the law of dynamics, The essential statement of Law 2 tells us that in the presence of a net external force, the momentum, the rate at which the momentum of that system changes equals the net force acting on that system. In other words, the net force acting on a system is simply equal to the rate at which the momentum of the system changes. This means that momentum basically is the mass times the velocity. This is change in time. So this is mass, change in velocity, divided by change in time. This right here is the acceleration of the object. So this is equal to ma. So we can summarize Newton's second law as the net force, the net force acting on a system is equal to the mass of that system multiplied by its acceleration. This is a very important law. Law three which is often called the action, reaction, law, essentially states that if one object asserts a force on another object, that object will in turn assert an equal but opposite force on the other object. In other words, if you have a wall, and Tommy pushes on the wall, the force, this is Tom, and this is the wall, the force that Tom asserts on the wall is going to be equal but opposite to the force that the wall asserts on Tommy. In other words, F12 is equal to negative F to 1. This is the essential statement of Newton's third law. What you need to understand about Newton's third law is the fact that it gives us the mechanism through which forces are created. In other words, when two objects interact, they in turn assert equal but opposite forces on each other. Understand that. What am I saying? I'm saying that forces always occur in pairs. If a book is lying on a table, for example, we have a book on a table. The table asserts a normal force on the book. This is the normal force asserted by the table on the book. 
The book in turn exerts a normal force on the table. This is the normal force that the book exerts on the table. So, forces occur in pairs, and by Newton's third law of motion, the normal force that the table exerts on the book is equal but opposite to the normal force that the book exerts on the table. This is very important. Based on these three laws, we will analyze a series of motions. So the very first example that we will consider is a block that is being pushed to the wall. So we have a block and this is the wall so we exert a force such that the block remains at rest. So the question is what is the value of this horizontal force that will keep this block at rest. Now, this is a pretty interesting problem, but irrespective of the problem that you are given to solve, the very first thing that you need to do is to draw your free body diagram. This is very important to draw your free body diagram. Now, what is a free body diagram? A free body diagram essentially is just a diagram that shows the forces acting on the object. Remember, only the forces acting on the object are drawn on a free body diagram. For example, we have our block. We will represent our block by a dot. Uh, I can even add a little square right there. We have the weight, which acts vertically downwards. We have the force P, which is acting to the left. This is our force P. We have a normal force from the wall acting on the block. So this is our normal force, this is F, N, wall uh, acting on the block. The block is has a tendency to slide downwards. That means that there must be a force preventing the block from sliding downwards. So there is a friction force acting upwards. Because the block is at rest, that means that the force of friction is static. So we have static friction S acting upwards. This system is at rest. That means that the sum of forces in the x direction is zero and the sum of forces in the y direction is zero. The reason this is the case is because the acceleration of the system is zero. Now, let's begin with the x direction. The forces to the right are positive, and the forces to the left are negative. So the summation of fx will be equal to fn wall block minus p. All of these will be equal to zero. That means that P is equal to Fn wall block. Similarly, the summation of forces in the y direction will be equal to Fs minus Mg, and this will be equal to zero. In other words, Fs is equal to Mg. This is from the sum of forces in the x direction, and this is from the sum of forces in the y direction. Now, what do we know? By definition, static friction is less than or equal to mu s fn. This means that 
fs max is equal to mu s fn. In this particular case, it is f, the force, the normal force exerted by the wall on the block. Hence, we know that fs fn wb, remember, the force of friction is equal to mg, so this is going to be equal to mg. Now, fn is equal to p. This means that mu s p is equal to mg, and uh, behold, p will be equal to mg divided by mu s. This gives us the minimum horizontal force required by the system to stay at rest. Thank you. If you have any question, please ask below. Subscribe to this channel because I'm going to be uploading a lot of videos that will help you. Thank you. Bye-bye.